most of the time, as you'll see in your course, the key signature will tell you what the home bass chord is. For example, But even if you don't know what the key signature means, you can often tell the home bass chord by looking at the chord symbols themselves. In many songs, the first chord called for is the home bass chord. So far, we've been seeing and hearing the most elementary kind of chord progression on the circle. It's an elementary chord progression because the chords don't wander far from home. No farther, in fact, than the neighbor on either side of home base. Now, this is the stuff of most children's songs, folk songs, hymns, patriotic songs, and the like. What keeps the chord progression so close to home base is the magnetic pull of the home base, the way the dinner hour on the clock pulls everybody to the table from wherever they are. As composers discovered over the years, the magnetic attraction of home base is very strong, so strong, in fact, that it can pull quite a long progression of chords toward itself. All in all, this circle of root notes is very handy to have around the house if you want to make your own music, invent your own chord progressions, or play by ear. So you should get on familiar terms with it. And that's quite easy to do. After all, it's only a clock. It has only 12 hours to know. It has a noon and a six and a nine and a three o'clock. So start by knowing those, and the rest of the circle will take care of itself. You'll find out a lot more about the pieces of this circle in your class, and also right here on the silver screen. Yeah. When we tuned in last time, or maybe it was the time before, there was a skeleton in the shower. And now, as our story continues, the skeleton seems to be in a jungle? But is it really a jungle? In fact, is it really a skeleton? Or is it only camouflage? Now, the way to camouflage anything, of course, is to upset the expected order of things. For instance, people expect you to appear a certain way, but if you upset those expectations, then you have camouflaged yourself. Well, the same is true of music when it comes to camouflaging the skeleton. You remember the skeleton arrangement? It goes like this. In other words, there's a limit to how much skeleton arrangement your ear can take. And it's a great relief when the skeleton is covered up and camouflaged. Not that there's anything wrong with the skeleton arrangement. Quite the contrary. Everything is too right, too much in order.
clock ticks along exactly as you expect, and everything is in its proper stratum of sound. So if you want to make your music more interesting, you have to camouflage the skeleton. Now, the most obvious place to start upsetting things in the skeleton is in the clockwork beat. In three-quarter time, the skeleton beats out just exactly what everybody expects, the old standard predictable um pa pa um pa pa So to camouflage that expected order of things, you can vary the skeleton with, say, some um deedly um deedly If you don't think that um dee dee upsets the expected order of things, then try it at your next board meeting and see what happens. You don't have to know how to read music to see what's going on here. It's simply a bar of plain old skeleton alternating with a bar of skeleton variation. And you can see how there could be dozens of ways to camouflage the old expected skeleton pattern. Instead of the expected bass chord chord, you could make it say bass chord bass, or if you like, chord bass chord. Or you could combine both and make it Okay, you get the idea, and the same holds true for camouflaging the skeleton in four-quarter time. Instead of the predictable skeleton's bass chord, bass chord, you could reverse that pattern, or turn it inside out, or combine it with a bar of good old skeleton. Suffice it to say, there are lots of ways to camouflage the skeleton's old expected clockwork, as every band leader knows. But varying the bass and chord combination of the skeleton is only one way to camouflage it. Any rearrangement of the expected order of things tends to be a camouflage, and that includes rearranging the expected stratums of sound. In skeleton, of course, the expected stratums of sound are bass, chords, and melody. You can camouflage the skeleton by rearranging those stratums. You can take the melody out of its usual top stratum up here, and you can move it down a couple of octaves so that it sits down here between the bass notes and the chords. <laughs> works exactly the same way on your piano. You drop the melody a couple of octaves so that it sits between the bass notes and the chords, and obviously you have to cross your hands to play this arrangement. Another effective way to rearrange the skeleton stratums is to sandwich a couple of notes of the harmony inside the melody. Now, you've heard this one every 4th of July. It begins with a melody, and the same melody played an octave lower. And 
a couple of notes of the chord sandwiched in between. <laughs> And a bass note, just to keep the timing honest. This arrangement is named just what you think, harmony and melody, and it works exactly the same way on the piano. It begins with the melody, and the same melody played an octave below it, and a couple of notes of the chord sandwiched in between, and a bass note just to keep the timing honest. So there are a few ways to upset the expected order so that the skeleton is camouflaged. But for all that paint and wallpaper, it still leaves the skeleton's impression of a smoothly running machine. No matter how you vary the bass and chord pattern, no matter how you rearrange your stratums, the camouflage still has the feeling of the skeleton with its perfect on and off abrupt clockwork. The reason for this abrupt and choppy sound is, in large part, the nature of the piano itself. The piano can't sustain a tone for very long, the way a violin can, or a clarinet, or a trumpet. The piano, ca the, the piano can't sustain a long tone like that. That's why the skeleton and its variation sound so abrupt and choppy. Each time you hit a bass or a chord, the sound is stated sharply, but almost immediately, it begins to fade away. The closest the piano can come to a sustained tone is a rapid number of attacks, the sound of the familiar arpeggio. The arpeggio is only a string of eighth notes, but your ear pulls them together so they sound like a sustained tone. Now the arpeggio may sound very busy and it may look very busy. But the truth is, there's a lot less going on than meets the eye or the ear. The plain fact is, the arpeggio is really only the old three-note chords played as individual notes beneath the melody. See for yourself. Because the arpeggio arrangement sounds so busy, you don't need the effect of the full four-note chords. So what looks very busy and complicated in a printed arpeggio is only the three notes of each chord played again and again.